SpaceX has been working on catching the Starship upper stage with the launch tower's mechanical arms, called Mechazilla, an incredibly complex task. Elon Musk previously suggested this catch could happen before the year ends. The purpose is to show Starship's full reusability, including both the booster and upper stage. However, due to ongoing technical issues during test flights, that timeline has been pushed back. On May 14, 2025, shortly before Starship's ninth test flight, Elon Musk revealed that SpaceX is aiming to catch the ship stage using the launch tower, just like it has already done with the booster. He said this might be possible by the end of the year, depending on how testing goes. This milestone is key to SpaceX's larger goal of making Starship fully reusable for missions like satellite deployment, long-distance cargo delivery on Earth, and future Moon and Mars landings. So far, the booster has been successfully caught three times, with the last two attempts showing consistent improvement. However, the ship stage is still facing challenges. The upgraded version, known as Block 2, has experienced repeated failures. In Flight 9, Ship 35 exploded due to a leak and loss of tank pressure. Shortly after that, Ship 36 was destroyed during ground testing when a pressure unit failed. These setbacks have delayed several of the company's 2025 plans. In a recent talk, Elon Musk said he still hopes to recover a Starship booster before the year ends. But if that does not happen, then maybe it will be possible in the first half of next year. This means there is still a chance the tower could catch the ship this year. But looking at how things are going, it seems more likely the first attempt will happen next year. Why is progress so slow? Looking at recent developments at Starbase, the reasons become clearer. Before Starship's upper stage can be caught, it must first survive extremely harsh flight conditions. Even on suborbital missions, it faces intense heat, drastic pressure shifts, and aerodynamic forces. Re-entry temperatures can reach around 1,400 degrees Celsius. To handle that, the vehicle needs a heat shield made up of about 18,000 protective tiles, plus working flaps to steer it during descent. But the current version, Block 2, has struggled to meet those requirements. Flight 7 ended in failure after a leak caused the vehicle to lose control. Flight 8 suffered an engine malfunction, and during Flight 9, another leak led to a spin-out, a failed payload release, and an explosion. Ship 36 didn't even get to launch. It was destroyed during ground testing due to a tank rupture. These recurring failures suggest that Block 2's heat protection, pressure systems, and engines still need significant work. Until those parts are reliable, catching the vehicle isn't possible. That's why SpaceX is now shifting focus to Block 3. If Flight 10 and 11 go smoothly, the new version, Ship 39 paired with Booster 18, could launch by late October. However, early flights of a new version are usually not used for risky missions. They are done to test if the ship is working, to find problems, and to fix them. So it is very likely the first real attempt to catch the ship will be delayed until 2026. Also, it is important to know that when the ship is caught, it will probably happen at a new launch pad called Pad 2, not the one SpaceX is using now. Over the last few months, SpaceX has been building this second launch pad quickly. The metal arms on this new tower were finished in February. The tower itself has already gone through tests using heavy water bags to see if it can hold weight. At the base of this new pad, there are signs that a test area is being built. It looks like SpaceX wants to move ships directly from this pad after test firings. If everything goes well, this pad could be ready before the end of the year. SpaceX has always planned to use the first launch pad to catch the booster and the second one to catch the ship. If they tried to catch the ship at the first pad, the space is too tight. It would be like trying to park a big truck in a small spot. Something would probably get damaged. The arms on the tower could hit parts of the ship they were not designed to touch. That could damage the heat shield. Worse, if the arms catch the ship in the wrong place, it could break the tower itself. That is why the arms on pad 2 are shaped a little differently. They are made to better match the size and shape of the ship. Still, pad 2 is not fully ready. If SpaceX wants to try a catch soon, it would have to do it at the first pad. But there is no clear sign yet that this change will happen. And so far, 
there have been no successful tests of this catch at either pad. The plan still stands to use the second pad, but delays in both ship development and the new pad's construction mean Elon Musk might have to delay the goal again. Even if everything else is ready, catching the ship with the tower arms is very hard. The ship is not shaped like the booster. It is more like a big flat object falling from the sky. It is harder to control. If something goes wrong with the ship's guidance system or if there is a small error in where the ship is aiming, the arms might miss. And if they do, the ship could crash. That could mean explosions, flying parts, and big damage to the launch tower. This is why SpaceX needs more time. They need to improve the software that guides the ship, test the timing and movements of the tower arms, and make sure everything works together. They want to make the first catch as safe and clean as possible. But what if SpaceX actually catches the ship for the first time? That would be a huge moment in space history. In the past, space agencies like NASA used different ways to bring spacecraft back. For example, during the Apollo missions, the crew capsules landed in the ocean using parachutes. That same idea is used today. The Dragon spacecraft from SpaceX also lands in the sea, but with modern upgrades. Other spacecraft, like the Soyuz from Russia or Starliner from Boeing, land on the ground. They also use parachutes and small engines to slow down just before they touch the ground. And then there was the space shuttle. It came back like an airplane landing on a runway. Now, Sierra Space is bringing that idea back with Dream Chaser, a small space plane that also lands like a plane. For stages that cannot be reused, like the Saturn V's upper stage during Apollo, NASA had some smart ideas. Sometimes they pushed the stage into space to orbit the sun. Other times, they crashed it into the moon on purpose to study moonquakes and reduce space junk. But all of these methods were based on either throwing away the vehicle or using parachutes to slow it down. SpaceX wants to do something completely different. They want to catch the ship right on the launch tower. This is not just about saving money. It also helps the environment, makes the process faster, and can bring down the cost of launches. SpaceX hopes to cut costs to under $10 million per launch. That is much cheaper than systems like the Space Launch System and Orion, which can cost hundreds of millions. Catching the ship with the tower also means Starship does not need landing legs, like the version made for the moon. That makes the ship lighter and easier to reuse. Once it is caught, it can be checked, filled with fuel, and ready to fly again quickly. SpaceX even wants to launch the same Starship many times during one launch window, which can last only about two weeks. Their goal is to make the time between flights as short as one week or even just two or three days, and of course the plan to send people to Mars is still many years away. It could take 10 or even 20 years. But something closer is also important. Refueling in space. To go to the Moon or Mars, Starship needs to refill its tanks while in orbit. This was first planned for the end of this year, but will probably happen early next year. Elon Musk has said that once they can reuse the ship, the next big step is to fill it with fuel in space. And to do that, catching the ship is a key part. So, even if it takes a bit longer than planned, the whole Starship program is still moving forward. A short delay will not stop the bigger mission.